in, not, not on the but bringing her in, uh, he's basically being, he's being smart and not right. I think you're right, and I agree with you as far as Palin is being uh, very trying on, on the ear. But on the other hand, just on Facebook alone, I looked, and she's got 4.6 million followers. And I know for a fact, because I followed her over the years for other reasons, that she was very instrumental in the, the building of the Tea Party and was instrumental in, in actually cruises his rise to power. So, hold, hold, hold on, that's exactly the point. So it's the Cruz campaign that's attacking Donald Trump. Yes, but she's tur she turned her back on Cruz and jumped over the... Well, but listen to what I just said. It's the Cruz campaign that is attacking Donald Trump by saying he's not conservative enough. They're using the old tactics of the Communist Party on him. He's not pure enough. He's not true enough. He's not conservative enough. Those are the tactics of the diehard communists right after the Bolshevik Revolution. Jeez. Now, I keep saying, do you want to win the election or do you want to keep arguing over what is more pure than who's I'm more pure than you? I'm holier than thou, in other words. So, Bob, are you a member of a t Where is the Tea Party today? Does it exist? I'm not a member, but I covered it, OK? I, you know, I, I, no, but wait, wait, where is the Tea Party? Where did it go? What happened to it? The tea Party's still around. There's what is it? Tell me what it is group of people that were never politically involved in the system and suddenly got interested in the, in the system. The fact that the Republicans... All right, they were defined originally by uh, Spiro Agnew calling them what? He gave them a name. He had a name for Spiro Agnew, had a name for the for those people, uh, disaffected individuals in the same way. And, he, you know, so the Tea Party coalesced around that concept of the Tea Party or sort of a revolt, a revolution, throwing the tea into the bay that kind of thing, a revolutionary fervor of we're not going to take it anymore. And they've been trumped and beaten by Obama, unfortunately. Obama's a vicious, vicious man. He is the real enemy of America. He used all the power of the government not to defeat ISIS, but to defeat Americans who wanted America back again. Thank you for the call. Never lose focus on who the true enemy is here. It's Obama who hates America. It's Obama who hates freedom. It's Obama who is a fundamentally an autocrat who has gone around Congress every way he can with the corrupt Harry Reid, with the corrupt Nancy Pelosi, with the illegitimate Democrat Party that doesn't want anything out in the open. Never forget who the enemy really is. And I'll use that term. They are the enemy of everything we believe in and our freedoms. Never forget who the enemy is. And now we come back again. How do you defeat that enemy? Who is best able to defeat that enemy in a general election? That's all we're talking about. Back in a minute. So, the Tea Party was formally defined as the silent majority by Spiro Agnew, incidentally. Tea Party didn't emerge out of nothing. In fact, Donald Trump continuously talks about the silent majority. What is the silent majority? It's you. You have no representation. It's me. I live in California. I have no senator. I have no congressperson. It's all left-wing fanatics. The most corrupt party in the history of America. Worse than Boss Tweed. Under Feinstein and Boxer and Pelosi. It's like Boss Tweed is running the state. I have no representation. I was shocked that when I went to court and I had faced a judge appointed by Barack Obama that she found in my favor at a district level. I'm sure she knows who I am, but she put that aside because she was fair-minded. I wish to God I could say the same thing about Feinstein, Boxer, and Pelosi, but I can't. In that sense, I, I have no representation. So does that make me a member of the silent majority and the Tea Party? Yeah, technically, yes. And what is it inspired by? Uh, freedom, freedom of speech. We can go on and on. We can define it over and over again. I'm the silent majority. I support Blue Lives Matter. How's that? You want me to go down the list? You want me to do the punch list for you? I'm a member of the silent majority. I support Blue Lives Matter, not thugs who do a crime, and then when they get caught, they say they're a victim. That's a complete distortion of reality. So what is the definition of a conservative? Spiro Agnew said, it's time for America's silent majority to stand up. That's what he said. That's how the, the first time I ever heard it. 
unspecified large group of people in a country or group who do not express their opinions publicly. Popularized by Nixon in 1969, in which he said, and so tonight to you, the great silent majority, my fellow Americans, I ask for your support. Silent majority, interesting. Phrase was used in the 19th century as a euphemism, referring to all the people who have died and others who have used it before and after Nixon to refer to groups of voters in various nations of the world. There's always something before, before the before, right? In the 19th century, it was used to refer to the de dead. <laughs> the dead. The number of living people, by the way, is less than the number who have died throughout human history. <laughs> Did you know that? <laughs> you ever think about that one? That's a weird one. <clears throat> the number of living people is less than the number who have died throughout human history. In 2011, there were approximately 14 dead for every living person. That's shocking. Anyway, I don't want to get into dead again. As the uh, New Yorker portrait uh, profile of me in 09 wrote, the writer... He said he refers to death about every three minutes. <laughs> I think I moved away from that <laughs> from that. But okay, we won't go we won't go there today. Death, dying. WABC Matthew, fire away. What is a conservative? Well, I'll tell you what it isn't. Uh, we'll call Marx called uh, a useful idiot. <laughs> uh, the low information voter. But uh Doctor Savage, when you think about um Fox News oh, But they exist they exist on the right as well as on the left. We have useful idiots on the right who are now attacking Trump because he doesn't meet up to their standards. That's why you have a disenfranchised Tea Party that can't come together when you have an IRS targeting scheme that was never, ever actually appropriated because we have a Justice Department that's so bad, a voter ID being passed in by the Supreme Court allowing people to vote without any type of driver's license or government ID. Absolutely. All right. So, but what is that? Well, hold it. We all agree on those points. We understand it's criminal behavior to say that an illegal alien can vote in our country. We understand that's a crime against our nation. We understand using the IRS against political opponents is right out of the Soviet Union. So those are issues for conservatives, yes. But you're not saying that Donald Trump wouldn't take care of those problems. I don't think you're saying that. Well, no. But what I'm saying is just like you commanding, have a commanding lead on the share market of radio is why people resonate with you and with Donald Trump. Because for once, we're finally getting somebody who's speaking what we've been talking about, what you've been talking about for 20 years, Dr. Savage. And it's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Borders, language, culture, my, mo my mantra for 21 years. Borders, language, culture, borders, language, culture, borders, language, culture. And on those points, Donald Trump meets my litmus test. Is he 100% in every direction that I want? I don't know yet. He's not president. We'll have to wait and see. We're almost out of time. The end of almost two hours, they've flown by. They've flown by like a screaming eagle, haven't they? And in the next hour, we'll do all the news, views, and reviews that you've come to expect. We'll continue this topic of what is a conservative. And I will, hope, I will help you understand that the low-information voter as defined by Popkin, the progenitor of the phrase, can apply to the right as well as the left. You understand that? Maybe you can understand that. You could be a low-information voter, even though you're self-righteous. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Well, silent majority, welcome back to the Savage Nation. That's an old phrase going back to the 1800s, but it has new meaning today, doesn't it? Now, many people who listen to this show consider themselves part of a silent majority without representation, and that we have a more silent minority 
as exemplified by the silent minority of communists, socialists, and Islamists who are in the Democrat Party, uh, denying us our causes, denying us our complaints, and overriding everything that we uh, wish to have in America, even though we're the majority. This tiny minority working behind the scenes in the dark, Feinstein, Boxer, Pelosi, all the way up the chain to Obama, they are those who are trampling on the rights of those of us in America who are probably the majority of taxpayers, incidentally. Not probably, definitely. We are denied the privilege of having our causes of complaint even looked into. For example, today, the Republican Party tried to vote on denying funding to bring in any more refugees from Iraq and Syria because they're afraid of the, the, uh, the uh, terrorists amongst them. And the Democrats denied that vote. That's called tyranny. The Democrat Party is now the party of the tyrants. And that's what's uh, at stake with this election. You want more of the tyrants, as exemplified by Obama going around Congress at every turn. Hillary, who's a gangster. Gangster! Email scandal. You're not even talking about it. The biggest st story of, all, of our time. That a Secretary of State would take information above top secret level and put it on a private server. We don't know how many foreign entities stole that information or use it to kill our troops. You want to get down and dirty? How many troops died because of the loose lips that sank ships? Remember that phrase from World War II, loose lips sink ships? Well, it applies to Hillary Clinton just as well. So maybe loose emails sink whatever. I, I don't have the, uh, the, the poetry today in this hour. Loose emails sink, uh, does have to rhyme with mail. Right? Loose lips sink ships. Loose emails. I can't rhyme. <laughs> Anyone who comes up with a rhyme <laughs> gets a free copy of my book. Loose emails sink blank, blank, blank. It has to rhyme with mail. So we're defining what happens, uh, when you, when you step out of line from the diehards, the Bolsheviks in the, in the conservative side. There are Bolsheviks on the conservative side who are like Mao Zedong or like Lenin or Marx. And if you don't, if you don't endorse their views 100%, you're not considered a, a, a rightful communist anymore. Now you're not a rightful conservative like Trump's not a rightful conservative because he doesn't meet the protocols of the elders of the uh, so-called right wing. All I said yesterday was I didn't attack Palin. I don't happen to like her, by the way. I'm not a big fan of that whole thing. That whole thing doesn't turn me on. I was never like one of those guys who was like, wow, she's hot. No, sorry. But it's not about whether she's hot or not hot. I just didn't big deal. I mean, she said the right things. Good. But that was then. This is now. She's old. Trump was new. Trump brought newness, freshness to the airs. And now he has to go drag up someone from the past. That's what I was saying. Don't read what I said, uh, what I didn't say. It's like England again. Here is exactly what I said yesterday in clip number one. All right, stop the music. Oh, this is earth-shaking. Oh, it's earth-shaking. Sarah Palin just endorsed Donald Trump. Great. Oh, I can sleep better. Great. That's so important. Sarah Palin endorses Donald Trump. That's smart. Just what he needed. Now I can rest. I can, I can sleep much better tonight. The very day they could have taken Hillary down on the email thing, they put up this. I, I have no words for this. I'm afraid we're seeing the meltdown now of the campaign where they're turning to the very same people who uh, destroyed Romney. They're undermining him from within. He's not listening to those who know who he can, what he could do. They're listening to the professional advisors, and it happens to every campaign just at this point. Just when they're about to win, they lose. He needed Palin like a hole in the head. I am greatly honored to receive Sarah's endorsement, Mr. Trump said. She is a great friend. Go on. And that's the, basically what I said. Those are my exact words. The only one who got it right was Carol Chumley on World Net Daily, which I put on michaelsavage.com. She quoted me. So then she goes on the stump for Trump, and she says this in clip two. Listen are you carefully. ready to make America great again? Yeah. Only Go one on. candidate's record of success proves he is the master of the art of the deal. He is beholden to no one but we, the people. How refreshing. He is perfectly positioned to let you make America great again. You ready for a command?